Hi everyone. EM gets a lot of press these days and most of the press tends to be in the EM simulation uh, techniques. Uh, you might hear how someone's EM simulator is getting so much faster. Of course we've all heard about the cloud. Uh, you're going to be simulating now your EM simulations on several remote machines. There's another place where uh, EM is advancing, and it's quite frankly not nearly as sexy or gets the press, but it's an important area. And so we at AWR, as we uh, work on our EM tools, one thing that's very important is to actually make the environment easier and more powerful for you to use, in particular when you're using several different EM simulators. So let's take a look at some of the challenges that you have to address if you're going to do this effectively and uh, how we actually uh, have, uh, well, solved some of those problems for you. So what are some of the challenges with actually setting up an uh, EM in an EM environment? Well, again, you've got several different simulators. Uh, you probably have 3D simulators like our simulator analyst. Uh, maybe you're going to talk to HFSS. Maybe you're going to talk to CST. You might have planar simulators like our simulator Axiom. Uh, maybe you want to talk to Sonnet, for example. So there are all these different simulators, some planar, some 3D. That's an issue. Of course, they're out there on your computer or out on the cloud. Uh, and they have different setup buttons. So we have to deal with that. Uh, we have to get all the setup information to them, the physical information, so the layer information, the material properties, uh, of course where the ports and boundaries are if they have boundaries. The trouble is the ports and boundaries can be treated differently on different simulators so we have to deal with that, uh, etc. Now another big thing, uh, a tremendous advantage is if we can drive all these simulators from one environment like Microwave Office is we can use one set of libraries and PDKs. Uh, PDK, if you don't know the term, Process Design Kit is a fancy name for a library. So you might have, for example, you're running your EM on a board and you have your board library with all your various P cells and layers and everything. You sure don't want to have to be exporting that library, resetting it up on different simulators various point tools out there. You'd rather drive it from one environment. Also you might have more than one library, more than one PDK. So for example if you had a mimic chip in a module on a board you really probably have three PDKs from different vendors. Different layers, uh, different stack ups, different materials and you have to control all of this in one environment and you only want to do it once. So that sounds like quite a challenge. I'll show you how we deal with it in Microwave Office. Finally, a very important problem is when you just draw things. So you're faced with drawing things in layout and normally in, in Microwave Office we have a 2D layout. Uh, after all we are a tool for circuits and so it's chip board module and most of you are used to doing 2D layout. How do you support a 3D EM simulator like Analyst with 2D layout? And I'll show you how we get at that. The second issue before us is once you have those EM results from whatever simulator uh, you chose, so the S parameter file, you want to easily be able to use them. And for example, they have to, uh, we use data sets to control the versioning of them easily. Uh, we can go back and forth quickly between that data. We support uh, a very tight coupling between the schematic layout and the EM layout. Uh, you can actually literally create the EM layout from the schematic layout using what we call extraction. Not going to be my focus today, but certainly an important topic. You also might want to be able to use those S parameters that you got from EM uh, in fancier simulations, uh, we have a feature called in situ antenna measurements, which I've actually discussed in another micro app in this conference, so I won't give you any details. The idea quickly is that the antenna patterns as they change, the input impedances of the antenna change, 
various ports, which affects the power amps driving the antenna. So they're coupled together and you want to be able to deal, deal with that easily. All right, let's talk about the EM socket, which is a term we use for the environment that controls all of these simulators. So basically, again, our philosophy here is we want to draw the same way, set the layers up the same way, etc. So essentially, it's one environment to rule them all, if you will. So let's take a look at some of the issues and how we handle it. Again, I've already mentioned uh, at the bottom of this slide this issue of multiple PDKs. I'll show you an example of this in a second. We also have this issue of it's basically a 2D layout. How do we do 3D? The answer in a nutshell is this. Uh, first of all, you are free to extrude shapes up or down. So that's one way. So you can make bricks, if you will. The second way is we have a lot of 3D cells that are pre-drawn. You see some examples here, bond wires, BGA balls, SMA connectors, for example. They're pre-drawn with parameters. You can change their shapes. You don't need to draw them. And the third way is we actually do have a 3D editor behind the scenes if you absolutely need to create your own 3D shapes. I mentioned the multi-technology quickly, this issue of dealing with two different technologies or more, so say chip, board, module, there's three, uh, in the same project, how do you do that? And I'll show you also something called hierarchy, which is actually how we control this. I think it's easier to see this if we actually look at an example, so why don't we get going on that? Here you see um, in this picture, uh, in our environment, we've drawn a board launch. You can see port one over there. And then we go on to a quad flat pack package. And we go with bond wires over to a mimic. So how on earth did we draw this? And remember, we would like to send this to different simulators. Now, in this case, uh, we're going to have to use a 3D simulator because we have the bond wires and you can see the extrusions of the package, etc. You wouldn't be able to do this in a uh, planar simulator. So, so how do we uh, go about getting at this? All right, well, the first problem is we actually have multiple technologies. So I've got a mimic library or PDK, and I've got a board PDK. And so the way we get at that, as you can see on the left here, is we're using hierarchy. And by that, I mean You'll notice it says board partial package is the EM layout at the top level, which you see is the board. Then the full chip, which is underneath the board partial package, a bit indented there in the uh, browser on the left. Think of that as a sub-circuit, if you will, or a sub-cell. That can use a different technology. And you see that that's actually a mimic laid out in a mimic PDK. So what we can do by doing this is we can combine technologies. Now at the end, at the top level, the board partial package, we're going to actually flatten the whole layout so all those subcells are merged together into one layout. EM has no concept of, of hierarchy. And we'll add the ports and off we go. And the software is smart enough to understand that you're adding mimic layers to board layers, etc and it keeps it all right. And then you can send it to various simulators. Again, all the simulators are being driven uh, in the same way. OK, let's talk a little bit about ports and boundaries. Uh, for those of you who are used to 3D simulators, you, of course, know you, know, you need ports. And they also usually have boundaries because you're uh, meshing up uh, space. And obviously, we can't go to infinity here. Uh, the, the type of the port <coughs> ex, uh, depends on uh, what the simulator is. Now, if we had a planar, if we, excuse me, if we have a 3D simulator like Analyst, Analyst supports wave ports at the boundary and lump ports inside the simulation. In this guy right here, you can see port 1 is at the edge of the boundary. It's a wave port. You actually could have a port inside, which would be a lump port. If we ship that to HFSS, for example, it's only supporting lump ports. 
And so the port one would be a lump port. So it, the details will depend on the simulator. The drawing and setup is the same. Notice too, the boundary here does not go all the way over uh, the entire mimic. Uh, we don't need to include everything. The designer here has decided they just want to look at the front end. And so they're only including the smaller volume of that front end, which then will make the simulation run faster. I mentioned this before, to draw the uh, bond, bond wires, uh, etc., we're using 3D cells. We simply drag these into the schematic. They're pre-configured. Of course, you have to set up the specific bands with parameters. It's very easy to do. Get the vertical dimensioning correct. Again, very easy to do. And usually, you can just use these 3D cells. We have quite a few of them. And our argument is, you know, most of you out there uh, he, who use our software, you say, well, I need a 3D simulator. Well, what do you need it for? You probably need it for transitions. So say a module to a board or a chip to a board or an SMA connector launch or maybe you do have a package. You're probably not using a 3D simulator uh, for an F-22 aircraft, right? So quite frankly, most of your designs for our customers are probably mainly 2D layout with 3D islands. So the 3D islands then we can usually do with these pre-configured 3D cells. Uh, quite frankly, there just aren't that many shapes that most of our customers need. What if you do have a shape uh, that isn't in our libraries? We have a 3D editor. Uh, you can create your own. Uh, typically, you'd parameterize it. And then you can add it to the library so your fellow engineers uh, can go ahead and use it. Also, remember these PDKs, these libraries, typically have pre-configured library cells. Uh, for example, vias on your board, or maybe the uh, FET fingers in your uh, devices on your Mimic, uh, spiral inductors on your Mimic. You can just go ahead and drag those into the EM layout. There's no need to redraw them. Uh, it's well aware of all those cells. And in this lower picture, those vias are actually uh, what we call P cells. Uh, I did not draw those. As a matter of fact, the line is an Emlin element. I did not just draw that as a rectangle. So again, complete capability uh, of using all the PDK uh, features. Another feature that's common in these libraries that we supply you is something called shape preprocessing and simplification. And what we have there is if, you're, if you've ever run EM uh, and you start getting into the layout, typically if you use a manufacturing or mechanical layout, there's a lot of features that don't affect the EM. Now, for example, obviously vias are circular on boards. But quite frankly, uh, depending on the frequency range and accuracy you need, a square via will do just as well, and it saves a tremendous number of meshes and therefore simulation time. These shape preprocessing rules, can, if you set them up correctly, uh, can actually simplify the vias. And what you see here in this picture is in EM, the vias have become rectangles, squares. Uh, it's hard to see it, but on the Mimic, they're octagons. Each PDK, each technology, can have its own shape preprocessing rules. As another example, on a board, a lot of you like to use what I call picket fences, where you'll take ground vias and stitch them closely together to get better isolation. That's an awful lot of meshes. And with shape preprocessing, you can actually turn that into one long via wall, which saves a tremendous number of meshes, and yet at the same time, gives you the same performance in the EM. So the beautiful thing, one of the really nice things about the PDKs and these rules is if you have these, no matter what simulator you're sending it to, you can use the same shape simplification rules. Uh, this uh, is just a feature in our EM socket that we support in our simulators uh, very quickly. This is Analyst here, and it's showing you the connectivity. Uh, there's nothing worse than drawing up a 3D 
uh, geometry, you run a long time in the simulation and you find out you didn't connect it correctly. So this is showing you the 3D connectivity uh, and I can see here that I haven't shorted out my signal line, etc. Uh, just to show you the results from that uh, simulation I, I showed you the picture of, what you have here are two situations. Uh, the blue and the purple uh, curves are your uh, insertion and return loss from the board to the package. And they look like about what you would expect. Quite frankly, the return loss at minus 10 dB uh, is not very good. And at this point, the designer would start optimizing that return loss to do better. I also went ahead and simulated the full package. So I drew the boundary around the full quad flat pack package and mimic. And I get the red curve. And what it's showing is there's a package resonance occurring at about um, 11.5 gigahertz. Uh, that happens because the package was not well tacked down to ground and we got a package resonance. You're not going to see that with the boundary just around part of the package. So it is up to the engineer if you're only simulating part of the geometry to make sure you're not missing important effects like a package resonance. One last note, um, I mentioned that we can send a layout from the schematic layout directly to the EM and run the EM called EM Extraction. We've actually extended that now to our 3D simulators. And so, for example, uh, we can now uh, send things to Analyst in 3D Extraction. These pictures right here are for Axiom, our planar simulator. And you can see they've extracted the schematic on the left, those red highlighted uh, nets, which you see in the schematic layout in the middle, get extracted automatically to the EM on the right. This is Analyst. Um, they have a mimic on a board with bond wires connecting them. And you can see the schematic in the upper right. We select those elements and the lower right, they actually get extracted to EM. So we've extended the concept of EM extraction to 3D simulators. Again, the idea to make it easier, less error prone, and uh, more unified for you, the designer. Uh, data sets, uh, we're using data sets for all of our EM. Makes it very nice to control the graphs. You can very easily go back to prior results. So in conclusion, there's a lot of new advances in EM simulator technology, but equally important, there have been advances in the environment that supports the simulators. You've got multiple simulators you want to use, planar, 3D, different simulator uh, vendors and products. You want to control them from one environment. Why? Well, quite frankly, it's simpler and it's more powerful because you can use the same PDKs, libraries with all their nice cells and design rules. You can use multiple PDKs for different technologies all in one environment and one setup and ensure that all your simulators are getting the same information, the same layout, and hopefully, of course, giving uh, reasonably accurate answers. Well, we're out of time, folks. Thank you very much, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the, this video.